when it comes to this photo right here, I am a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. The story behind this is that I was with some friends from California and we drove over to the Green River in Utah and we found this really nice overlook of the Green River. I went down to this little crevasse and snagged this photo right here, but I was feeling a little bit claustrophobic down in this crevasse, so I climbed back up, the sun came up, I quickly grabbed my camera again and then snagged this photo to capture the sun star. Now I took this photo not for the composition, but because I knew that I wanted to blend the two photos together in Photoshop afterwards to create the final product. That is what we are going to do in this video, blend two images to get a sun star in your shots. Let's go ahead and get right into it. We are starting off in Lightroom here, and you can see I have both of my photos right next to each other. Here is our photo from the crevasse or this little kind of enclosed section overlooking the Green River in Utah. And if I go over to develop, you can see I've made a few basic basic adjustments. Uh, you can see I've done some masking here just to bring a little bit more out of the photograph. And then I've synced those adjustments with this second photo here. Same thing, just trying to balance and capture the exact same uh, settings so that it will blend together more, um, more easily in Photoshop. So I have this first image selected. I'm going to hold down Command and select our second image and then go up to Photo edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now that we're in Photoshop, we can go ahead and begin the process of blending these two images together. I can go over to my layers and we can turn off our top green river or move it to the bottom so we have our sunburst layer on top. And you can see though that these do not align perfectly. They were shot at the same focal length, but it is not the same composition. The sun is not in the same spot. That's not a problem. What we're going to do is go down to sunburst. I'm going to change my opacity from 100% to 50%. And then we can go over to our move tool and simply reposition it the best as we can. Now, I was not in the exact same position. Things are gonna slightly change even though it was at the same focal length. So it is not going to align 100%. But I'm gonna do my best job. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm gonna slide this around and kind of position it and kind of looking on the horizon here. I'm going to zoom in like that. And then I'm going to use the left and right and up and down arrow keys to just slowly position it into place and where I see the least amount of overlap or the least amount of ghosting on the horizon. I'm kind of using this little uh, point right here as my reference um, point in the photograph somewhere like that and then I can take the opacity from 50 all the way back up to 100. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out to fit the screen again and then we can see how this kind of more or less aligns with our big scene. You may think it would be easy to just simply mask in the sunburst in this photo but the problem is if I do that if I add a black layer mask if I go and create a brush and just brush in that sunburst you can see that it still doesn't quite match up with the landscape. Things aren't 100% here. The horizon isn't fully there as well. And it just does not look 100%. So we're going to delete our layer mask. And instead, we're going to create a luminosity mask targeting just the highlights to then mask in only those bright spots of the sunburst. Now, if you have one of these luminosity masking plugins like this, like the TK panel, it's super easy. All I do is create a luminosity mask. We do like a lights two or three or four and then mask it out and we're good to go. If you don't have one of these luminosity masking plugins, that is not a problem. Adobe does have a built in luminosity masking tool. However, it's a little bit unintuitive and not quite as good as you can get with one of these little cheap $30 plugins. So to do so, you go up to select and then down to color range. And then from here, you go to select and not sampled colors, but we want to target the highlights. We want to select the highlights of this photo. So we select the highlights. And then from here, you have a range where we can select the amount of highlights we want. We want to be a little bit more specific with this. And above that, you have fuzziness, which is just like feathering. So we're going to look at this and just try to have just this highlighted portion of the sunburst selected. If I go too far over and have too little fuzziness, then it doesn't quite work properly. 
but I could say something like this is okay. And I'm gonna hit okay, just like that. And then from there, we're going to go down and add a layer mask. Now you can see that it isn't 100% okay. Our layer mask is not perfect or our luminosity mask is not perfect. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click on this layer mask to reveal it. And then we're going to have to touch up this layer mask so that we only have this bright sunburst coming through. And I can do that with our brush tool. I can hit B for brush and then switch from white to black. I'm gonna change my flow up to 100 and I'm going to simply just brush out all of the portions of this photo that we do not want to include in the final shot. We don't want to include this section of our sunburst um, into the whole shot with the Green River. So we can just change our brush size. You can just use a bracket key to make adjustments with that and just kind of go through here, just erasing these parts of the photo you do not want included and in showing through. Because you can remember when you're masking, black conceals and white reveals. So we are masking out or concealing sections of the photo we don't want. We only want to reveal this section of the sunburst. You can go ahead and just mask out this little bit of flare right there. Over here down, there's still some some little sections that don't quite look so good. And then I'm going to hold down again, Alt or Option, and that is going to reveal our sunburst layer. And then I can just kind of work by eye at this point, select the mask, make sure I'm on black, and I'm gonna make my brush size bigger. And at this point, I can just go ahead and kind of by eye erase some of this stuff. I can go ahead and change my flow or my opacity, whichever one you prefer down and then I can feather out the edge of this sunburst just like so. I would say right here in the center though, I do want a little bit more revealed. So I'm going to switch to white from black so I can reveal a little bit more. And you can see as I do that, we get a little bit more of that hazy, nice warm glow from right around where the sun, uh, the sunburst was coming up. We have that kind of nice hazy look and I want to still include that in the final photograph. So at this point, I'm going to zoom out, gonna hit Command Zero, and then we can see before and after, before and after. I would say that looks pretty good, although we are still a little bit dark in here. You can see that between the two photos, this section around the center is a little bit underexposed and it doesn't quite make sense. We need the sunburst to be the brightest point. We can't have any darks in there. So to fix that, I'm going to create a curves adjustment. Let's open up our adjustment layers. Let's do a curves adjustment. And then I'm going to clip it to just the sunburst layer by holding down the Alt or Option key, hovering in between the two and clicking so that any adjustment I make with this curves adjustment will only affect the sunburst layer. I'm gonna zoom in like so, and I could just remove some of the blacks from this like so. Maybe even remove a little bit of the shadows like that, just to have it look a little bit brighter, a little bit more realistic. Zoom on out and we can see before and after. I think that looks a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna zoom back out and then we can see before and after. And just like that, we have done a pretty realistic job of combining and compositing these two separate photographs to create one realistic final shot that I like a lot more than just the cave shot alone. A big thank you for watching. If you wanna check out any more of my photos or go on a tour with me, check out my website, warnerwildernessphotography.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.